Okay, let's now focus on the relegation battle, lads. This is getting very juicy down at the bottom. Uh, Everton, Burnley and Leeds are all fighting to stay out of the bottom three. Quite simply, who do we think is going to stay up? Because I think we all agree Norwich and Watford, I mean, they're gone, right? I mean, Norwich, I think, mathematically can get relegated this weekend coming up. So pretty much see you later to those two teams. But Nick, I'm going to start with you. Everton, Burnley, Leeds. I mean, who do we think will stay up? Who do you think is going to go down out of those teams? Jeez, it's uh, it's not going to be Leeds. That's about the only thing I think. Okay. I think they're fine. Um, I think they have the best combination of talent, team spirit, and direction of the three groups. There's there are serious considerations uh, and worries for the other two in that case. Burnley, I think, has the right spirit. It's still a matter of talent. It's still a matter of of getting results on a consistent basis when the other team has more talent than you. Uh, Everton, the big question here, and I just I think it's the same thing we've had for months: is are they are the right buttons being pushed? When push comes to shove, is Frank Lampard going to address the team, the mentality, the spirit the right way, or is he can continue to keep saying, you know, while this is the same sort of pressure I felt when I was competing for Premier League titles, I, I just still have doubts that when it comes down to the wire, is is he going to have the right magnetic pull in that room and and i know that that seems like a little bit of a cop-out but to me it's everton's spirit versus uh versus burnley's talent in terms of the negatives and flip-flop them if we're talking about benefits yeah andy you agree with that well it's 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 incredible that, that we're talking about the burnley talent uh versus anyone really just kind of given what the narrative has been around them for years and the fact that I think it's 50 50 at, at this point, whether it's going to be Everton or Burnley. And the fact that we are at that spot, I, I think is really remarkable because we've seen this kind of slowly playing out for Everton all season where they've just slowly dropped and dropped and dropped and they just haven't stopped. And, and you keep thinking at some point, okay, they're going to figure something out. They're going to string together three wins in five games. That'll be just enough to pull them away from the relegation zone. Essentially what Leeds have done, essentially what Newcastle have done. They've gone on and extended that even further, but Brentford did it as well. And Everton have just not managed to do it. And, and, and I do buy into a little bit of the spirit there because what we saw from them uh, a couple of games before Liverpool, I guess, because uh, I mean, that's just, that's such a mismatch right now. And I think that probably also highlights just how far Everton have fallen is just a couple of years ago, they could compete with Liverpool. They belonged on the same field as Liverpool and they just simply do not right now. And so I'm looking at these, these remaining fixtures, Burnley have the easiest of the three. I would say Everton probably have the second easiest and Leeds have the hardest. And so they've got a little bit of a cushion at this point. I think it's what four points right now, but I don't know that that game against Crystal Palace with Leeds on Monday, I know they, they got the clean sheet and, and they continue to improve defensively and they're picking up points and everything. I'm just looking for a little bit more from them. I think going forward an ability to be dangerous an ability to create something without having to win the ball high up the field and, and have a quick counterattack. I just want to see something a little bit different from them before I, I fully buy in and say leads are safe because I could see them picking up a point, maybe two the rest of the way, given the fixtures that they've got. And at that point, uh, you know, it, it is one or two wins from Everton or from Burnley and Leeds will fall right down in there. That's so true. I was going to ask you guys, do we think it's the magic 40 point marker this season is actually what you want to aim for? Because usually it's around 36, 37, maybe 38 that keeps you up. But yeah, Leeds have a five point gap ahead of Everton who occupied the last relegation place. But Everton have a game in hand. Um, so they sit on 29 points. Burnley are in 17th on 31 points, and then Leeds are in 16th on 34 points. So when you look at the schedule, I mean, the only thing I can say for Leeds is that obviously it's horrendous. They have, you know, Man City to play, Arsenal and Chelsea, and then they have Brighton and Brentford to finish the season, which are the two easier games, but not easy at all. But the thing that could save Leeds is that they're playing Man City in between their Champions League semifinals, and then they're playing Chelsea just ahead of the FA Cup final, which I assume Thomas Tuchel will prioritise because Chelsea are sitting pretty in the top four. So, Nick, given that, and the fact that they're playing a lot of games, what's it, three of their remaining five at home for Leeds United. So the mm -hmm. crowd at Ellen Road, incredible atmosphere. Um, do we do we think they're safe or can they be dragged into this? Because it's, it's just, this season, so many twists and turns. I feel like every time we said they're definitely down or they're definitely safe, then it hasn't quite worked out like that. 
It's funny. We talk about very fine margins all the time. For me, I'm thinking about this weekend. And I. It, it's not about what Leeds do. I don't expect them to win. However, it's about what the other teams do. Because if they can creep a little closer, if they can get them in a result, within a result, and this horrible run-in, then I think there's something to be worried about. But if if this weekend happens and nobody's any closer, then I think Leeds can breathe a little bit easier. I, I know that's just one week and it's kind of silly, but we go back to the the fine margins and um, just, <clears throat> I guess as an aside, I don't want to take you too far off the point, but Everton, they are now against Man City and Liverpool, had, in my opinion, clear penalties not go their way in what turned out to be very close games. And if I'm Frank Lampard, I'm, I'm going siege mentality here. And then I, I have to wonder the way we've looked at Everton of these three teams as the group with the superior talent, um, at least in my opinion, does that not swing in the other direction, regardless of who you're playing? Because it makes the fixture list look, and this is where I draw it back together. It makes the fixture look list look more manageable if you think, well, that could have been two points. <laughs> against their eternal rivals and uh, Man City. And let's frank, frankly, if Everton pulls out a result against Liverpool, is Lampard not an absolute hero right now for a quote-unquote genius, for giving them the ball, for having 85% possession go the other way and getting a point out of this rivalry? He would be. He would be. But like you said, so many fine margins. You can see how angry he was with those decisions. And if we look at sort of the, the schedule remaining, I mean, I actually think Burnley are, are going to be safe. I'm looking at their schedule. I think this is between Leeds and Everton. I honestly wow. do, because um, I, like Andy, I was pretty concerned with Leeds' lack of just ability in the final third. I thought they just played for the draw. They hung on for it at Crystal Palace. And I don't think that's a very good uh, sort of habit to get into late in the season like this they sort of played like they knew that they could get sucked into a relegation battle at palace which mm -hmm. you don't want to get into that situation and especially when you're playing you know city this weekend and like i said arsenal fighting for the top four and chelsea on their day can just rip teams apart even if they don't really care and put the reserves out so it, it's it's difficult it's really really difficult i think it's going to go, go down to the wire i really do and i think it's going to be between leeds and everton so uh, that brings me nicely onto the next question I wanted to ask you, Andy. If, if it is Everton that go down, let's focus on them. That would be the first time they've ever been relegated from the Premier League, one of just an elite few clubs that have never gone down. If they do go down, was, would that be the most shocking relegation in Premier League history? Because West Ham have gone down, Leeds have gone down, Newcastle have gone down, Man City went down, but it was sort of Man City before Sheikh Mansour, so almost a totally different club, but still a big club. But this feels like something that we could never really have predicted, right? Considering Everton, the longevity, how solid mid-table and or top six chasing they've been for so long now. So this has yeah. kind of come out of nowhere, as bad as they've been for the last season and a bit. This, this is going to be really shocking if they do go down. It, shocking, yes, in general. Uh, shocking in terms of the situation and what we've been watching slowly happen at Everton the last three or four years. Uh, not so much, I guess. Like you should have probably seen this coming at some point, but I think Nick made a, a great point about they've got the most talent of, of all three of the teams that we're talking about here. They've got the most talented individuals. I don't know that one, it fits together. And two, I don't know that they you know, really have a great grasp of what Frank Lampard wants to do tactically. And so I don't know what to expect from them from game to game. And so I think that's, I think that's a very important piece of it because if you look at Leeds, we can disagree with you know how much they were able to attack and create against Crystal Palace. But we know what they're trying to do. You can look at Burnley and even just, uh, what, two or three or four games under Mike Jackson, you can look at them and say, oh, they want to have the ball a little bit. They want to possess. They want to create a little. We can see what they're trying to do. I still don't quite see it with Everton. And so um, it's it's interesting that you arrived at the same conclusion that I did, but I, I couldn't bring myself to say it, Joe, is I do think it is between Leeds and, and Everton at this point. I do think Burnley will be the one again, and I don't I don't know how. Every single year they manage to do it, and we can't even say it's Sean Dyche now. That's the one that he was the one that almost took them down. Uh, on Everton being the biggest, you know, the, the shocking uh, relegation, for people that did not follow the Premier League before NBC got the rights of the Premier League, I feel like they don't have the proper context of what Everton has been for this century, right? Because 
they've been not just a top half team, not just like a European contending team. There were multiple years where they pushed for Champions League and they got in one year and they finished fourth. So I, I went back yesterday. We had a meeting. Um, we were kind of talking about this. And, and so I looked back at the, the finishes for Everton. 2004, they finished 17th. They avoided relegation by one spot. Since then, almost 20 years, they've not been below 12th for a single season they have not gone below 12th and now they might get relegated it's happened very very quickly because of the money that's been lit on fire and wasted building that squad up now half a billion pounds is just absolutely incredible and this is what you get at the end of it it's so true i saw a stat that they've actually spent more than liverpool uh in since 2016 on, on transfers and just think about that the quality of liverpool squad and quality of everton like you said the, it's not like the resources haven't been there that Farhad Mashiri hasn't put given that money to whichever manager or head of recruitment that's been there. It's been spent really, really poorly. And even if they do stay up this season, I struggle to see how they can return to being top six contenders anytime soon, uh, to be perfectly honest. It's going to take a huge rebuild there. Uh, Nick, in the final weeks of the season, what do all three of these teams need? We kind of talked about it there, the quality, the mentality. I mean, what do they need to do? What's key for them to keep themselves in the Premier League? Because essentially it's the same thing that all three teams need to do, right? Yeah. Well, Burnley has to do something away from home. Um, we, we haven't seen that again. As much as we talk about them picking up wins, it was uh, it was Wolves and Saints at Turf Moor, right? Uh, unless I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I it, it's, it's something that we need to see from them. They won four games this year before, what, a month ago. So I think there's real concern there about... Uh, they're riding a high right now, but let's say they only get a point or don't win at Watford. Doesn't that sit through back? Doesn't that? And Watford is going to be coming for them. Uh, that doesn't mean much because Watford doesn't defend. But these are that's the interesting thing. There. Everton needs to get something under its belt. Uh, they they know they've had some sort of moral victories. Again, um, are we talking about a completely different outcome or at least a point? If um, if Anthony Gordon didn't dive the first time and then gets the penalty the second time against Liverpool. So Everton needs a little bit of a boost, a break to go their way. Now, granted, they got that when they beat Newcastle and Newcastle was arguably the better team in that game. But I think more than anything, Everton needs something soon. And um, and Leeds, I think, just needs to kind of keep doing what it's doing in the sense of the, the the clean sheet's huge for them. We know that that what the Calvin Phillips absence has meant. There's still a chance that Patrick Bamford does return. Um, he's been missing the whole year. I think they're just trying to get into the end of the season, right? Just, I mean, everybody's trying to say that. But when you look at Leeds, there are pieces there. And if they were able to address what they need, I think they'd feel good about starting a new season. Absolutely. I think for them, it's, you know, the last two games are the winnable games, but you don't want to leave it that late to need right. to win one of those games. And then a bit of bad luck or a red card or, you know, injuries cropping up again, and they could be in a very tough situation. But for Leeds, Everton and Burnley, it's a tough situation, gents. Last few weeks of the season, all of them are scrapping to stay in the Premier League. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more twists and turns for us to talk about in the next few weeks. So head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for the latest news around the relegation scrap. And my word, I think we're in for one heck of a finish to the season. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.